So we're in my um, workshop, mm -hmm. which is currently just my small little home brewery, but it is going to be eventually get the grade and become a good with the brewing. Currently, we've got so a 25 litre hot liquor tank, and currently I use it for the gr the grain uh, to mash in initially and sparge, but once we get the U60 litre one, you know it's got its own heater and that in, so you'll just have the mashing water heated up by that in that but you still need something else separate to sparge into this is my current just you know mash tun which is just you know a thermos thing it's quite common to use a thermos for home home brewing because it keeps the temperature a bit more stable because it's insulated and then it would just go into you know just a cooking pot um from mashing out and it will just yeah goes on to a gas burner and we use that method mm -hmm. simple basic whole grain home brewing uh, method really all this stuff will be going basically none of this actually needs to be here a lot of this we'll just get rid of the only thing really to say keeping is this is mm -hmm. for the sparging the controller we'll be keeping the fridge and freezers because that's going to be access to fermentation chambers the simple home in one systems so they incorporate sort of this bit mashing and the um, boiling all in one vessel and with the limited space we've got to work with that helps they're also like have the pump integrated and stuff so you can do like advanced stuff like whirlpool and, and controlling the temperature a lot better than something like this and also that was when i was pricing up making a brew system with individual pots and making my own just because of the current climate of stuff coming over from other countries there's a, there's a shortage of it and then we think and what is here will really expensive so well we need something like for the packaging station because that Packaging can be a little bit messy, as I say. You want the cap on foam, but you, you, get, you get the foam will sort of like hover just slightly over the can, you know, and you get a good head on the pint. You want the same sort of thing because it stops again oxygen ingress. So when you put the can lid down, it like seems flows down a little bit. And then when you put in the can seam, it like spins it around so it can just spin beer and that way. Right? It can be messy, so we will sort of get stainless steel table for like the sort of like packaging area a bit like sort of a wet area a bit more we just got to decide what where we put everything because everything's sort of got a flow a bit you want your brewing area to be next to your fermentation area and then your fermentation area wants to be next to your conditioning sort of packaging area because then you're conditioning sort of stuff in there so then you need your packaging right next to that you'll the further it is away is the more big on the you lose in the lines and also like the more problems you can potentially get with like you know if it travels too long around an uninsulated piece of pipe it can warm up and maybe cause you firming issues so it's decided exactly what format that way so you brew here fermentation here, have the conditioning chamber here and then we'll have the stainless steel table here with the duo filler. Yeah. This is what you use to fill the cans with, this du duo filler. Good stuff seems to be coming from like for home brewing type stuff from um, Scandinavia for some reason. You stick the cans in up there where one side of it is for CO2 so you can purge all the air out mm -hmm. of the can so you've just got that nice it's filled with co2 it mm -hmm. prevents uh, dissolved oxygen getting in which for really hoppy beers mm -hmm. you don't want any oxygen at all especially like new england hazy types because we're turning them a funny gray color then the other one is gets your beer in and it just fills nicely from the bottom you, you've got we'll have to dial it in and get it right so you know because you want a cap on flow and keep it in absorption but it is you know semi-automatic so you know you're just going to press the button aside you can fill two cans at a time and you've just got to swap it in and out so put the cap lid on top and then um, you know seam it probably each time we brew we will probably get anywhere between 100 and 120 cans so we've got that we've got the the Bruce Beacon come in and we've got a cannula pro can seamer come in uh, which will see, seam the 
cans, and I think you need to get that right as well again, because if the cans aren't seen properly, they won't keep carbonation and they won't then stay in good nick. And like just little things like for the Brutal, like an insulation jacket, so it just uses less energy, mm. and it's more insulated. Uh, the only other things, so I've, I've got like accessories for the Brutal, so like I've got like a whirlpool arm, which basically makes it like a whirlpool inside mm. it. And when you make a whirlpool like that, all the debris that's in there goes into the cone, yeah. so it will settle out in the middle and just result in much clearer wort and stops like stuff blocking. So it lets us use pellet hops rather than leaf hops yeah. in the copper, which is something that I actually lack. So we have to use leaf in the copper, whether mm -hmm. it's nice to just have pellets because they've got a much smaller profile and easier to clean up after. And that way you only need to source one format at the moment, half the time where I'm like looking at designing beers and I'm like, I can't get pellet and leaf to do the beer, so therefore I can't do it how that phase I want. Maybe you can just get pellet and see if you can just then use it and everything. And I've ordered all the initial ingredients for our first three beers. First three beers are going to be a Pacific Pale Ale, very much in the style of like the Aussie beers that both me and you like. Um, using the whole Aussie hops, so Big Ones, Galaxy, Victoria's Secret, and Enigma. The XPA, got that as well, and the first sort of like one-off beer, like the Cold IPA, which is sort of more US sort of variation of like IPAs. Not everybody's sort of had one heard of them yet, like Hazy's, the kind of like the counter movement against Hazy's a bit. Setup's done. First off, we've got probably the most important piece of kit, which is our all in one brewing system. This is a 70 litre Brewster Beacon. It's all nicely set up there with its insulation jacket, it's on its own little pedestal with tiling underneath because it can get messy brewing. I've got a hot water tank for sparging here. We've got our fridge. This is our first fridge, and this is where we have it fermenting and we can just control the temperature in fridges to grate for it. We just need to hook them up to a little controller. Another bit of kit we got, we're having trouble getting more fridges to convert like the right size. Revolution, which are the same people that make our all-in-one system, make little fermentation chambers. Uh, the purpose built for it uh, is just very simple, just some good insulation and a cooler. Again, have another 50 litres fermenting in there. We've got a little kegerator here, which we will then transfer all the beer from the fermenter into corny kegs, like such, uh, just to uh, carbonate or and just do it sec secondary conditioning, get down really cold, because you want it down really cold for your packaging. So then the beer will go from here, up to this dude little machine here, which is our can filler. So we have this side, you can purge the cans of uh, oxygen, because you don't want oxygen in your beer, with carbon dioxide. And then the other side here, uh, we'll just fill with beer slowly from up the top. So we can fill two cans at a time. You have one fill in, then start the other. And then while they want, we can seam it on this bad boy here. This is our cannula semi-automatic seamer. You can just now actually brew beer and can beer in your own home. And I haven't built this yet, finished off, but this is our little label applicator, which will um, 
get built soon when I actually need to package some cans. Over the next couple of weeks, what will be happening is we'll just be brewing more beer. We'll get to package our first beer and can it and label it. And when we're going to release everything, is going to be Taste Cumbria uh, towards the end of September, just in association with Beer Cockermouth, for their beer tent up in Cockermouth Marketplace. What we'll be doing is we'll be kegging some of this beer, so some will be available on draft, but we'll also be canning some of it. So that's it for our fit out video. This is now the beginning of August. We probably started this fit out sort of beginning of July, so it took roughly about a month. So now we've got about a month just to brew as much as possible so you guys can drink as much as possible and taste good beer.